the scenarios of surgical treatment for benign prostatic enlargement we had very good session on medical management last week we discussed few scenarios we had good feedback on how to improve the presentation discussed lot yeah. of uh, uh, evidences also because uh, as you know benign prostate and malignant prostate are the two tables where we should present lot of evidences that's very good to get good marks okay now the scenario is you have 68 year old gentleman presenting with uh, urinary symptoms predominantly voiding symptoms and uh, he was previously evaluated by your colleagues uh, because he was kept on tamsulosin and finasteride for his symptoms for the past 18 months symptoms are quite bothersome his ips score was 20 with uh, quality of life at 5 previously when they evaluated by digital rectal examination his prostate size was 80 cc and uh, one of the previous flow rate showed uh, maximum flow rate of 8 ml per second with uh, residual urine of 35 ml he has got good sexual life as i said he is 68 year old how are you going to take him further Yeah so um, uh, this man clearly he's he's young he's 68 with uh, bothersome uh, uh, lower tract symptoms in the severely symptomatic group he failed uh, medical combination medical management and he has got sexual function from this information i will see him back in the clinic all the information given take into the account his age his comorbidities if he's any in anticoagulants his uh, sexual function and his desire to preserve that and uh, also his process size i will counsel him about surgical management the surgical management take into account his comorbidities i've mentioned anticoagulants and his uh, sexual function uh, there is a process size factor and a presence of uh, middle low and there is operative techniques available in my unit uh, from his process size is 80 cc uh, he could be counseled about um, uh, resection techniques vibrative techniques uh, ablative techniques and non ablative techniques the inoculation techniques uh, are either open or endoscopically uh, currently being reserved for a process size greater than 100 cc okay what is in general indications for surgical treatment in a patient with failed medical management um uh, either uh, yeah worsening uh, symptoms refractory to medical treatment recurrent uh, hematuria what retention secondary to uh, a blood outflow obstruction uh, history of recurrent urinary tract infections uh, blood stones formation or um uh, increase uh, post void residual uh, and also presence of uh, or features of high pressure chronic retention okay and um, so what options you will explain to your patient now uh yeah from the au guidelines uh 2022 we know we have uh, five categories in the surgical management this is either can be uh, uh resection techniques such as trp and bl- uh, blood and neck incision there is um uh enucleation uh, techniques either open or endoscopically but this currently be reserved for process size greater than 100 Uh, in his case he could be uh, counseled for uh, bipolar trp could be counseled for gill laser prostatectomy uh, prosthetic urolift uh, providing that he does not have middle low uh, ablative techniques such as uh, uh, resume and non ablative technique uh, uh, such as uh, sorry uh, non ablative te- uh, ablative techniques such as resume and prosthetic ulcer embolization non ablative techniques such as urolift and i tent okay um let us discuss the turp so let us assume that the patient after discussing all the pros and cons choose to have turp on the day when the patient is attending the surgery patient got consented prepared draped whatever the antibiotic prophylaxis everything is done what are the techniques by which you can do turp uh trp um uh, uh can be done either using monopolar diathermy or bipolar diathermy um uh, there is current uh, review uh, by suman et al group uh, which compared the two uh, bipolar uh, uh, trp has uh, uh, a better uh, perioperative outcomes in in terms of uh, less 
TUA syndrome rate, less transfusion rate, and uh, less catheter time, and um, uh, and comparable uh, IPSS parameters and quality of life compared to the monopolar TURP. Uh, it's been done uh, te in technology-wise, can be done in a true bipolar and quasi-bipolar. The true bipolar is the gyrus system, and the quasi-bipolar is the TURIS system. Okay, what is the difference between the two? Uh, in the gyrus uh, bipolar system, the passive electrode is uh, normally attached to the uh, uh, sheath, to the resectoscope, but in the quasi turis system, the passive electrode attached to the sheath. Okay. Now, regarding the procedure itself, when you are doing the cystoscopy, let us assume the patient has got like a 0.5 centimeter intravesical protrusion median lobe and occlusive bilateral lateral lobes. So, is there any techniques you are aware of intraoperatively, whether you are using monopolar or bipolar loop? Uh, in my practice, I, 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 I use uh, the, the, the standard 360 uh, de, de, degree, um, uh, 360 degree um, uh, resection started from uh, one o'clock and going all the way around. Uh, but I'm aware there is also other techniques uh, has been described in the literature before, such as a blander technique. Uh, what is Blandy technique? Uh, Blandy technique by which you create, um, uh, you, you resect the uh, middle low first to create a channel to improve irrigation, and then you resect at five or seven o'clock to achieve homostasis in the in the in the uh, Benedict, uh, 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 supply venous supply, and and then you start from one low and you move to the other low. Any other name techniques you are aware of? Um, I can't recall at the moment. I didn't know before, but so I can't recall at the moment. Okay. And um, so how good is the monopolar TURP? Any evidence to support that? And the monopolar TURP, um, uh, the uh, meta-analysis before, I, I recall the uh, Hong BMJ analysis have compared the monopolar TRP uh, to bipolar TRP, but it has comparable uh, result in terms of IPSS score and uh, and Qmax and post-word residual quality of life parameters. Uh, uh, Reoperation rate in the two uh, techniques around 1 to 2% every year, and it's 8% uh, at eight years. And the recent uh, 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 review article by Sumani Group has shown the same result in terms of uh, long-term outcome. So what are the complications of monopolar TURP? Uh, TURP associated with um, a high risk of, of uh, TUR syndrome. This is around 1% to 2%. There is risk of transfusion, which is around uh, 2%. Um, uh, there is also risk of uh, uh, longer catheterization time compared to the bipolar TRP. And um, I think that's that's about it, yeah. Okay. Um, anything specific with bipolar, by which the bipolar differs from monopolar in the procedure or in the complications? Yeah, bipolar TRP, because we use the uh, saline irrigation system as, a, as opposed to the glycine used in monopolar, Therefore, the incidence of uh, uh, TUR syndrome, even though it, is, it does exist, but is significantly lower compared to the monopolar technique. Uh, transfusion rate um, uh, considered to be lower, which improved the perioperative outcome. Uh, and therefore, need for irrigation and catheterization is lower, and hospital stay um, uh, cohort are actually lower compared to the monopolar group. Okay. Um, what do you know about the vaporization of the prostate? Uh, vaporization uh, of the prostate that um, uh, done uh, either using uh, a, a, a diathermy, like bipolar diathermy, or can be done using a glial light, uh, light laser uh, uh, energy. Um, uh, most unit now has adopted that technique, so glial light laser prostatectomy using a KTP uh, laser, which has uh, a wavelength of 532 nanometers, uh, normally absorbed by hemoglobin, and uh, laser penetration uh, depth around one to two uh, millimeter. Uh, there is different machines um, 
to adopt the technology, the most famous one is the 180 XPS, which can use either uh, 80 to 120 uh, watts uh, machine. Okay, so um, we'll stop there. Yeah. Uh, 10 yeah. minutes completed now. Um, again, okay. good presentation, Sami. No major concerns. You're sailing quite smooth. I can easily say mark of 8 out of 10. But very rarely in case if the exam is a little bit more critical, maybe you may get into the region of 7. But uh, well done. And uh, with you have another uh, good amount of time to prepare. You can only go better from here. Um, the only few things which uh, I can give you as a feedback and of course you can join me if you have any difference of opinion. Eurolift contraindicated in median lobe is no more a correct statement and uh, as you know there is a mid lift study which has clearly proven that Eurolift can be done for median lobe up to 1 cm intravesical enlargement. We can uh, divide the intravesical prostate enlargement as uh, up to 0.5 cm, 0.5 to 1 cm, more than 1 cm. You can measure them by transabdominal or transrectal ultrasound. So anything up to 1 cm, there is a median lobe technique known as midlift technique. In the midlift itself, there are various techniques like, uh, for example, using one implant, using two implant, Peter Chin's technique, etc. You know I am very passionate on Eurolift, so I don't want to take it too much into Eurolift, which is not useful for exam. But just the baseline, Eurolift is not contraindicated for median lobes less than one centimeter that you may be able to present. Okay? Yeah, that's yeah. A, I I have only recently just uh, rephrased my answer, mm -hmm. uh, and, and I and I, I do agree with you. Like uh, it should be offered, but I think I don't know from exam purposes because it hasn't. Uh, being taken off the guidelines is still in the guidelines if there is no middle loop. I don't know if it's safe to say it can be offered or is it safe to say like as in line with the guidelines. It is definitely safer to say because uh, mid lip technique uh, has taken part by multiple centers in UK itself. And we will discuss a scenario on this a bit later today. So it's yeah. definitely safer to say it will take ages for the guidelines to instill the evidences. Because a lot of publications there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I'm glad that you brought in Somani et al. Bipolar TURP review paper. That's a very good paper. And I wish everybody should have a copy of it and uh, get the gist of it. You can mention it in two, three places. BPH and surgical management is a, quite a common scenario. So the chances of you using this scenario is very high. That's very good. Yes. And um, the, I wish you to be a little bit more confident in the techniques for TURP. As you know, yes. when I post this recording in the YouTube, on the background, you can see the theory slide. So that will be also very useful for you. And um, so there are four techniques, named techniques. Nesbitt's technique starts from 12 o'clock and then continuing in the lateral lobe and median lobe is resected last. So this technique is relatively less used because you always wish to clear the median lobe first. Okay. The second named one is Alcock and Phlox method. It starts say 9 o'clock or 3 o'clock and then based upon surgeon's preference, you can go up or down. The third one is the Mormaeus method, which is a modification of Alcox and Flox modification, where we do the median loop first and then start at 3 o'clock or 9 o'clock and start doing the later loop. Given the choice to me, I will be mostly choosing the Mormaeus method. And um, because uh, once you clear the median lobe, you will start having good amount of irrigation that will help your later lobe resection a lot. Mormeyer is the same name we are using also for stone punch. So when you are studying, you can correlate. Oh, this name is sometimes familiar to me. So you can uh, correlate with the other things also. And um, there is a Barnes method where we can resect the median loop first and then the later lobes are resected from bottom to top. It's always nice to start in my hands three o'clock or nine o'clock and then do either way rather than bottom to top. So these are the four methods. Brandy technique is fine, but starting at one o'clock is slightly off shooting from the normal. So you may have to tailor your sentences in that. 
and um, when you mentioned the reason why we are starting the section at this place uh, you can start mentioning the named prostatic artery like uh, artery of bostolac or artery of fox but you mentioned in your answer venous supply so venous supply yeah. we are not much bothered we are more bothered about the named arterial supply which is a branch of prostatic artery which is a branch of uh, inferior sacral artery which is a branch of the inferior epigastric artery so it's nice to know the anatomy because there may be a scenario on prostatic artery embolization where this blood supply and branching will be quite useful for you okay yeah we'll do thank you thank you very much regarding the retreatment for trp yes 1% per year is not a bad value but uh, as you can see usually the retreatment is rare in at least initial 3 to 4 years isn't it so the retreatment happens only like 8 years 10 years 15 years time so normally around say 12.7 or you can just round off to 13% in 8 years is a good figure common thing what we use in the clinic like 10% recur in 10 years is also not a bad one to quote and um, complications of monopolar trp again uh, when i am um, putting the youtube link uh, there is a good amount of complications listed you have clearly mentioned the short term complications but you can also add like clotting reduction uti long term complications of bladder neck contracture urethral stricture retrograde ejaculation erectile dysfunction and you can include the reoperation rate also so the complications can be little bit more comprehensive and uh, good that you have mentioned the types of uh, bipolar thing just to clarify uh, yes there are two methods true and quasi bipolar system in the true system there is a passive pole separately in the receptosome tip itself so if you look into the tip there is a resection loop and there is one uh, non functioning loop in the top which serves as a receiving electrode okay that is a true bipolar system while quasi is the one like uh, as you said like uh, the olympus gyrus one where um, there is only one loop but the sheath works as the receiving one you are correct but i want everybody to be absolutely clear true means in the resecting electrode there will be a passive uh, loop okay it's like two loops in fact the passive loop you won't be seeing when you are operating you'll be seeing only the active loop which is below yeah good anything you want to add before we go for the next scenario i uh, no no that was very good yeah, yeah, yeah. i just need a bit of reminding of the the tick uh, the the technical techniques. differences yeah between the okay, you can use our youtube link when you're doing the youtube link just pause there take a screenshot or spend some time there and get your absorption and use the same mm -hmm. link for revision that will be good yeah yeah thank you very good